not the individual person of Dallas. It's something evil, festering, stinking in this community. Dallas is the city where three years ago, Vice President and Mrs. Johnson were spat upon and cursed by a seething crowd in the lobby of one of our hotels. Dallas is the city where many leaders and officials expressed anxiety and fear of incident when first learning of the President and Mrs. Kennedy's intention to be our guests. Dallas is the city where on the day of the President and First Lady's arrival, the Dallas Morning News ran a full-page ad with the mocking caption, Welcome, Mr. President. The ad contained a number of questions which were themselves accusations of President Kennedy, implying his cooperation with the U.S. Communist Party, his bloodily extermination of anti-communist allies, and his scrapping of the Monroe Doctrine in favor of the spirit of Moscow. In the name of God, what kind of city have we become? The Dallas press was extremely anti-Kennedy. It was very reactionary, right-wing press. He got these papers that had been put out in Dallas, these hate papers uh, about Kennedy, how they, nobody loved him, and, and very hateful paper. And he was disturbed over those, very, very disturbed. They thought his policies were too liberal. Uh, he'd been talking about uh, uh, things like the Peace Corps, the civil rights, and one thing and another, and, and welfare programs, and, and so forth and so on. Not the individual person of Dallas, it's something evil, festering, stinking in this community. You who've written stories about the shame of Dallas and the rape of Americanism here know what I'm talking about. There's something that smells. And I want to get back to my own city because I, I'm going to vomit. <laughs> And now, speaking for Christ and against communism, here is Billy James Hargis. I lived as a boy in East Texas. We had uh, an animal, a vulture, that we called the buzzard. And in the summertime, when the, we had drought and there was no rain, and the cattle or the livestock were dying for th in want of water, these buzzards would wait around, waiting until the the uh, situation killed the cattle, and then they had soared out and devoured the carcass. This is the way I see communism. They're not going to try to overthrow this government until we're bankrupt, until we have recession and depression, until our money's gone with our welfare state programs, our socialistic legislation, all these federal aid programs, and all this foreign aid commitments, and our commitments to the United Nations, and these international commitments, all of which are not stopping communism, but are certainly bankrupting the United States. Developments in Red Cuba, 90 miles from the shores of Florida, hold more ominous warnings for a sleeping American public. While the deadly enemies of the American people close in for their final stages of encircling our nation, enemy nations within intensify efforts to chip away the foundations upon which American freedom rests. More and more strange voices call for surrendering of our national sovereignty to some type of world authority. There are increasing efforts to centralize authority in the federal government in Washington, D.C., under the guise of federal aid. Of all the defeats in the Cold War, the capture of Cuba by the communists is the most unacceptable. <laughs> Stupid patriot. New Castro was a communist in 1957. But moderate patriots, such as the State Department, haven't admitted it yet. If we could get our government to stop helping the communists everywhere in the world while pretending to do the opposite. For just six months, the whole communist worldwide empire would start falling to pieces. That's all we would have to do. Now we are face to face once again with a period of heightened peril. The risks are great, the burden's heavy, the 
problems incapable of swift or lasting solution. And under the strains and frustrations imposed by constant tensions and harassment, the discordant voices of extremism are once again heard in the land. Men who are unwilling to face up to the danger from without are convinced that the real danger is from within. They look suspiciously at their neighbors and their leaders. They call for a man on horseback because they do not trust the people. They find treason in our churches, in our highest court, in our treatment of water. They equate the Democratic Party with the welfare state, the welfare state with socialism, socialism with communism. They object, quite rightly, to politics intruding on the military, but they are very anxious for the military to engage in their kind of politics. Yes, the citizens of Dallas were always perceived as a little angrier, a little meaner, and a little louder than the rest of us. And they seemed to like that reputation. It is my pleasure and privilege, General Walker, to present to you at this time, with all of the emoluments and the privileges of honorary citizenship in this great city of Dallas. <laughs> Some years now, and in order to make him feel completely at home, and to reindoctrinate him into the habits and living here in Texas, a strictly hill country hat to General Walker. On October 24th, Adlai Stevenson was hit by placards wielded by Walker's more aggressive followers. Dear friend, I don't have to come here from Illinois to teach Texas manners, do I? And I One day early in October 1963, Adlai Stevenson, who was in our ambassador to the UN, called me. He had just come back from Texas. He found the atmosphere there very hostile and menacing, a lot of strong anti-Kennedy feeling. And he said he knew that the president was planning to go to Texas, and he wondered whether it was a good idea. I don't know how serious people were, but I know that where I worked, uh, people were saying the day before he came to town, well, where do you think the shooting will start? Well, what do they mean by this? I, I can't say at this point. Uh, and there was a certain amount of snickering about that, as if it was a live possibility that shooting was going to take place. I was not very much surprised, really, when, when there was shooting. The atmosphere in Dallas on the eve of Kennedy's visit was tense, taut, and violent. Police Chief Jess Curry was concerned enough to confront the atmosphere in a statewide television address. Because of the unfortunate incident which occurred here during the visit of Ambassador Stevenson, people everywhere in the world will be hypercritical of our behavior. Nothing must occur that is disrespectful or degrading to the President of the United States. He is entitled to the highest respect of all of our citizens. And the law enforcement agencies in this area are going to do everything within their power to ensure that no untoward accident or incident occurs. We will take immediate action if any suspicious conduct is observed. And we also urge all good citizens to be alert for such conduct. 